Larry, yes. what should 49ers fans really expect this year from Brandon Ayuk? I'm going to set the floor right now. Bare minimum, 90 catches, 1,000 yards, eight touchdowns. He's never had more than eight in any season of his career. 90 feels like a totally doable, reachable number in a year where I think you're going to be throwing the ball a little bit more just because Brock is starting to figure it out and the lights come on and you can do that now. And a thousand yards pretty much is what you better be giving a team if they're giving you 30 mil. So uh, I, I look at that as this, the, the floor of my expectations of the Brandon Ayuk season. Uh, my over under on all those numbers, 90 catches, 100 yards, eight touchdowns. Where are you going, Kruger? Okay, well, um, I'm going to go with 17 games played. How nice does that sound? I'm going to go. <clears throat> I do think. Um, <clears throat> I think Ayuk is going to catch fewer footballs, but more touchdowns. So I'm going to go. 17 under catches under 90 seven, catches above eight touchdowns. I'm going to say 17 games, 70 catches on a hundred targets, 1,250 yards, but wait for it. 14 touchdowns. Wow. All right. I'm going 14 touchdowns. Why? Because I really believe that when it gets right down to it, they're, they added Pearsall. They added Cowing. There, there's they're they're going to run the ball I think a little bit more this year. Um, I think they're going to use Mason more. I think they'll play. I think they'll run Mason more. So I, I I think there'll be fewer. They always play a slow pace. They got more weapons. Um, and I think Pearsall and Cowing are going to be use, used. I don't think they're going to be sitting on the sideline. So I think Ayuk's receptions go down a tad. His uh, receiving yards go down a tad. But his money makes him the guy in the red zone. And I think it's 14 touchdowns for the big boy. I mean, that's a freaking monster number. I mean, you give me 10, anything over 10 would be great. I was going to say 12, but I'm going to go 14. I'm going to go well, 14. Well, you know, hey, it's time to dream big, baby. Season starts. So, and dream days. big. You're paying him. Hey, look, you're paying him. He wanted 14. You know, you wanted to pay him 15. He wanted to pay 30. You know what? He gave you seven touchdowns. We, You doubled up your pay. How about double up your touchdowns? Brandon Ayuk agrees to a contract that honestly has been sitting on the table for him for about a month. Why he took so long to say yes to it. He was obviously holding out, hoping that the Niners would cave and redo their offer. They didn't, but it's all done. Like, I, as I promised everyone, the minute there was a signature on a contract, this would be something that we never had to worry about or think about again, and it's the exact same way I feel for Trent Williams. What's the magic number on Trent here, Larry? What's the magic number? He's got a $70 million contract out there. He wants guaranteed money. Ayuk just got 76 guaranteed. How about 50 for Trent? Can we go to 45 million guaranteed for Trent? Does that get him in on, on Tuesday afternoon? 50 million get him guaranteed? Because we're not gonna we're not gonna blow up the pay structure. Like we're not gonna renegotiate, but the guaranteed money, sure, we can shift that from this pile to this pile and everybody be happy. I'm thinking three or four million dollars <throat> probably gets it done. <clears throat> as far as right now, Trent's making twenty three, and I think the top guy's making twenty eight. If yep. you could get him now, the I think the debate, and I think the part that's holding this up is, I think Trent probably wants multi years, and the Niners would probably want to, in, you know, encapsulate the entire deal into one year. Uh, I don't think they want to keep. You know what I mean? I, I think Trent wants more down the road so we'll see but i i would say give him three or three to five million dollars more guaranteed how about this um, why don't you just guarantee why don't you just guarantee all of his 2025 salary yeah but is that gonna be enough because he is the top tackle in football and he's making 23 and well, the no, top guys the are making 28 trent, trent is honestly aged out of the top in football conversation paycheck. He's aged out of that. Not according to PFF. I mean, I, 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 I agree with you, okay. but PFF doesn't agree with us. Sure. Well, but the thing is, is I feel comfortable giving bigger money to a guy who's got a career in front of him than the biggest amount of dollar to most of the guys got most of his career behind him. And I and, hear you, and but what if the guy who's got most of his career behind him, like Trent says, Hey, maybe I'll, I don't know, retire. Okay, so here's the thing. So we'll <laughs> you know, he's got you that. now. 
card. We'll splash you now, man. We're going to guarantee you're worried that something could happen this year that would take your money off the table for you next year because you have no more guaranteed dollars. Obviously, the minute you play it down this year, your salary is guaranteed and you're we're going to guarantee you all of 2025. Now, your salary bumps up to like 33 million come 2026. So we will if you got more years than you at that point, we'll sit down and renegotiate at that point. But to get you in now, we'll make good on next year. We cool? Like, I would put that in front of them if I was the Niners. I would be surprised if they haven't. I'm not smart enough to be able to craft um, the appropriate contract for Trent. Um, all I would say is get, if you if you're going to play him, if you intend to play him, as you stated, he needs to play in week one. If the if the Niners, if you if your opinion represents their opinion, get it done in the next 24 hours. Please make sure that he's make sure that he's in the facility on Monday. Make sure that he's full go, ready to go, practice come Tuesday. You know, um take, if I were I mean, Jed York, if I were Jed York, I would have sent a, a franchise wide email saying Season's about to start. Everyone have a great Labor Day. You have a long weekend. Except you, Parag. You're not allowed to leave the fucking building until Trent Williams has a contract. You know, that's, uh, I would just say, hey, it's Labor Day for everyone except you, Parag. You, you're working still. So hopefully you know, that's and, what they know about their business. You know, part of me kind of wonders, too, is if the, if the Niners' structure partly led to this in that Parag gets judged on the contracts and nothing else. And these guys all kind of get judged on in like a vacuum, like in their corner of the universe. And it's all like, we aren't going to Lynch isn't going to make a bad trade, but then Prague's not going to make a bad signing. Well, wait a second. Y y y you know, to get resolution here, we, somebody was going to have to cave a little bit. You know what I mean? And it was like, well, was it going to be Lynch on a trade demand? No. Was it was going to be Prague on a, on the salary negotiation. No. You know, so in a way, they're, I don't know, they seem like they're structured to work independently of one another as opposed to together. I don't know. Maybe that's just my read on it. But it just seems like Jed, Jed's like the final, you know, report card. And Kyle's got to win games. And John's got to make good trades and good draft picks. And Parag's got to negotiate favorable contracts. And I think they get judged independently of one another. I mean, so... Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully it will all work out for the 49ers. Um, I'll say this, man, Shanahan and Lynch have aged an awful lot since, uh, they took over in 2017. Oh yeah. Um, and, Shanahan you know, really has, he's aged like a president and you could see really on, on Lynch, John Lynch, John Lynch. You could see how exasperated he was. He was at some 49er like STEM student Two nights ago. Yeah. It was, like, it was the, um, it was you know, the big, thing. Yeah, big. Well, the yeah charity thing right, and right. some of their and, big and, donors and someone asked the players him about, all showed up. Somebody asked him about the team and the season and the holdouts, and he was just like, you know, <laughs> fuck, you know, he was basically uh, muttering at the charity event. You could see how exasperated this thing actually got them. But at the end of the day, Larry, and this is why I never understood why it got so contentious because this is a player you drafted, you developed. He's family. He was born a Niner. And this is a guy that did nothing to make you want to say, let's get him out of the family. He doesn't quite fit around the dinner table anymore. Brandon Ayuk was family. And sometimes families fight. But the most important thing is that you remain family. And I really believe at the end of the day, that's how this all gets wrapped up. He's perfect for the team. They seem to be perfect for him. I know that there was a lot of confusion and finger pointing there, but it's over. And he's out. And he, he is going to be out on routes for the next four years. And that sounds like it's good for 49er football to me. So I think it's a day good to celebrate. Good for Brock. Yes. Great oh, day for Brock. Without a doubt, it was a great day for Brock. 